Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 46 Media. I am Farrell Lynn. And I'm your co-host, Michael Stiggers. And today's episode is brought to you by Ray's Energy. Along with Damascus Audio, your new name in both audio and lighting equipment rental. Anything you may need, from birthday parties to weddings, quinceañeras, and beyond. If you need any of your lighting needs or your audio needs fixed up, you're going to want to get a hold of our friend Gunnar Damascus. That's right, the very owner of the Forge of Damascus studio, and he's going to get you hooked up real nice, ladies and gentlemen, at competitive rates. We will not be underpriced. <clears throat> we start today's segment off with a recap of what we saw last Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, we went and stepped forward on the first leg of our new promotion, AOC, otherwise known as Art of Combat. That's right, we have stepped away from putting so much focus into the street fighting that's been known as the Guerrilla Combat Collective as we have our season finale coming up May 8th for the Guerrilla Combat Collective and now we're going underway with our proper MMA league and our first event we saw Mr. Tank Braley take on none other than Jay Beans Garland who has since then had a nickname change he is now known as Mr. Jay Black Ice Garland and well it was interesting to say the least gentlemen Let's fight! Let's get it on! Remember, people outside of this cage are not... And if y'all don't see that orange flag... Oh, oh, oh! Uh, Garland, how are you feeling after that one, bud? I'm, I'm ready for the next one. Hey, it was just too damn big for me. I mean, it's just, no, size you, is, a, is a thing. Uh, you, sure. you feel like you feel like you're uh, gonna be coming back? Oh yeah. That's it was officially called at 23 seconds. That's a new record with any of the combat promotions under the 46 Sports franchise. A little surprise toward the end there. We had our. Uh, senior referee Pat Garrett uh, hit him with a confetti shower, much to Jay's surprise. There was some ice cold water down there in the bottom <laughs> of the bucket. Super middleweight champion. Further in the activity for both Garland and Brady. We will see Brady take on Casey McCraw here very soon. Date to be announced promptly. And also Garland has called out none other than former Golden Globe champion Barry Newby. Details coming soon. As well as the possibility of Single rematch of the epic Hunter versus Hopper. Baltimore Orioles and the Oakland Athletics battle for 13 game winning streak of bragging rights. But the Orioles come away with the upset with the help of Austin Hayes and his first two home runs of the season, which ended the 13 game winning streak. In a stellar performance with their starting pitcher, John Means, on the mound. You know, Mike, I really hate to see. Streaks like this end, it's kind of heartbreaking uh, from the fans' perspective, but, you know, I think it's only naturally right. Within sports, you're going to see your heyday, and you're also going to see the end of your heyday. I mean, that was a cool 13-win streak, but, I mean, I think we can all share a piece of the pie, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, you win some, you lose some. Absolutely. The best thing you do, you go out there, you give it your all. And I believe that's, what, that's exactly what happened. They went out there, they gave it their all, and they played the best game. I think, you know, in professional American sports as a whole, we're starting to see a little more of that division come to the table where, you know, LeBron moving to the Lakers, yeah. we're starting to see some dominance there in L.A. once again. We're uh, starting to see some dominance in Tampa Bay where we've been seeing it yeah. in New England for, exactly. many, for many of us our whole life. Exactly. Practically. American basketball coach explains what he believes Russell Westbrook means to the Oklahoma City basketball team and franchise. The OKC head coach states Westbrook is a big part of the success of the organization. Brooks also implies that it's hard for anyone to duplicate the impact that Westbrook has made on the OKC Thunder franchise. Uh, you know, now, Westbrook, he's a good player. He's a team player. And he has made a definite impact. I, I've got a difference of opinion, honestly. Um, his MVP season, did he deserve an MVP? Yes, he did. Is he what I would call a team player? No, he, um, he absolutely is not. And I feel like 
I mean, and I respect your opinion as well, Michael. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like we watched the Oklahoma City Thunder go from a house fr house name franchise, and we watched it destruct one by one by one by one. I think what we're looking at there, and what we'll look at later into the future and be able to acknowledge, is it was an unbelievably undeniable talent. But we ultimately saw a guy who ever so slightly lacked maturity to control his anger, and he ever so slightly lacked the maturity to share that ball. Chasing after stats is going to harm you more than it's going to benefit you every single time. You're going to put too much of a workload on yourself, and you're going to see much like what we saw in this 46 team, where things start to fall apart at the seams because you're trying to tackle too many things. And I can respect that. That's understandable. Oklahoma City, in my personal opinion, they don't penny pinch on uh, rounding up players. Uh -huh. There's good hands there to help you. Pass the ball to them. Take a breath off. Let the defense know that you're capable of doing something else. Has he earned an MVP? Yes, he absolutely has. Was it done for all the right reasons? No, I personally don't think so. But, you know, that's what makes the whole point of having two hosts. Oh, yeah. Variances of opinion. The Boston Celtics head coach Brad Stevens explains their loss to the Brooklyn Nets and what they need to change. Stephen states that they have to play with a better pace up the floor. Absolutely. You know, the game of basketball is not simply a one-way kind of thing. It's, it's very differently versed in the way that it's structured because you don't get to choose between offense or defense. At a moment's notice, you're going from one to the other. Well-rounded execution is the absolute only method of ensuring that you're playing with dominance. Mm -hmm. And you know what? <clears throat> With a household name like the Celtics, yes, that's fine and dandy and all, but guess what? You're in an age of heat. You're in an age of Lakers. You're in an age of Warriors. And conventional Celtics ball mm -hmm. ain't got no championships in quite a while. It's time to shake things Absolutely. up. It's time to end dynasties. And if you're going to do that, your only method of making that happen is to play that whole floor. That, and in my personal opinion of actually having a play a little basketball, it's run, 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 run. But at the same time, you have to play your pace. Exactly. If you're a fast-paced team, fast pace, up and down the court all day, all day. Mid-pace, same thing. You have to play your positions. You have to play at your pace. You have to stay focused. Reach. To me, that goes right back to the Westbrook topic. Play your pace. Stop draining yourself of energy. You know what I mean? It's You are no good if you overexert yourself. You're exactly. no good to the people exactly. around you. And I'm not just badgering or beating Russell Westbrook up on that topic. There's many others that do it. Many others that do it. I felt uh, I felt Vergeau, you know, not, I'm not even saying Vergeau was a legend. But I felt that that's one of Vergeau's greatest mm -hmm. downfalls was he went so hardcore in the first two that in the back half, you saw a tired Anderson Vergeau who was having to commit to flops and stuff to supplement for the fact that the dude's just dead tired. Just because it's not a contact sport doesn't mean that it's not a physically demanding one. Yeah, you're, you're still running, you're still using your energy back and forth, back and forth. You get tired, so yes, you have to pass the ball, you have to have the ball movement, you have to be in your position, you have to know your role, you have to play that role to a T. That's, like I say, Offense wins games, defense wins championships. And that goes baseball, football, basketball, soccer, whatever sport you're playing, all of that applies. I found that the defense winning games has supplemented very heavily into this fight league that we're running. Uh, now that it's over and behind us, I feel like it's not so bad to uh, air the locker room talk out. Um, Jay Garland has been training pretty heavily alongside with me. We've been getting our game plans together. And part of his tactic for his last bout was to agree that we're going to show a false sense of fear, not look his opponent in the eyes, act nervous, and once the initial bell is rang and he's encroached half of the distance from corner to corner, mm -hmm. go from a slow creep to a rush, the best offense. It's defense. You're absolutely right. It, 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 it turns what became a structured system into fight or flight. Exactly. In fight or flight, we make 
great decisions are vital for states. Make a cost to either way. Absolutely, I, I thoroughly do agree. Around the world of combat sports, it's hard to avoid two names that have become pretty commonplace. Famed YouTubers, the Paul brothers, Jake Paul and Logan Paul. Jake Paul, in what's been criticized by Dana White, last bout with Ben Askren. Um, whether the fight was fixed or not, I'm going to tell you my opinion. I don't believe it was. I don't believe it was a fixed bout. I think he got really uh, blindsided to an awesome shot that was getting thrown at him. Get my money, Jake! Get my money! And perhaps the pressures of everything else that was going on. Quite frankly, Jeff Ross... Uh, probably was a big addition to that. In my personal opinion, uh, if you look, uh, Ben Askren actually tweeted, wow, this is not family entertainment. Because, you know, he has multiple kids that look up to him, multiple kids that watch his, uh, his fights, and I'm sure he wanted all of those fans to, you know, be watching the uh, bout that was aired exclusively by Triller Fight Club, in which, to me, Snoop Dogg well, was an awesome commentator, but on a side note of that, I'm going to get to that in a second. Pete Davidson solid Jeff Ross absolutely vulgar I'm not gonna say it on this broadcast uh, parents uh, make sure you're not with your children when you go play it but go watch the initial bell Jake Paul versus Ben Askren tell me what you think about Jeff Ross's comments there I for one find it absolutely disgusting and shameful to this sport shame on you Jeff Ross here we go um, about to go. Um, aside from that Logan Paul is looking to be staging his bout with Floyd Mayweather coming up soon. I wish Logan Paul the best in that bout, but it's my personal opinion he has not earned that opportunity. Fight some boxers, make your statement, real competitors here too, not not people we've never heard of. Fight some named boxers. Name and we'll talk about a Floyd Mayweather exhibition. You know what I mean? I'm not the one making that decision, but if I was, that's what I would ultimately say. And, uh, I totally agree. Thank you. Skipping back just a little bit to uh, Snoop Dogg's commentary. After Jake Paul drops Ben Askren, you mm -hmm. clearly hear Snoop Dogg say, Where's my two million? Where's my two million? My money. Give me my two million! Two wow. million mother And Snoop Dogg says during the fight, too. You think I'm gonna put two million dollars on the motherfucker? Dana White responded and said, first and foremost, that is illegal. He did not ever agree to such a bet and said, if he did, why wouldn't he just go to Vegas where his payback odds are three to one? We here at 46 want to know what you think. Was Dana White embarrassed that he made the bet and the bet went wrong? Or was Snoop Dogg perhaps fabricating the story? We want to know your side of the opinion. Let us know. And we have had the unfortunate opportunity to have viewed the footage. Uh, we here at 46 don't recommend uh, non-mature audiences to go view it. We are uh, as well choosing not to put a link to the video out there, though it's easily findable. We do want to say uh, that we don't condone this action, and uh, most certainly this this has got to stop. This has got to stop. We uh, we look for these young people to be the futures of our world, and that's not going to happen if they don't ever get the chance to make it to the future. We are very saddened by this, and. Uh, we pray protection among the ones who are actually doing their job right and actually have honest intention at what they're doing. It's another life gone, and it's a shame. And, I mean, like, it's a really touchy subject. These people just lost their daughter. She was fighting with two other girls, and she had a knife. The mouse <clears throat> came up, just opened fire. And me personally, I want to send out my condolences, my prayers, and everything for the family. This has to stop. I have kids. So I could just imagine the pain and anguish that these people are facing and going through. Let me ask you, Michael. Um... Does it, does it trouble you, the ever-so-tension-increasing world? You know, it's, it's going to be any day now before your children are, are driving. Are, are they driving already? Uh, yeah, my oldest boy is. Do you fear uh, pullovers? I do. I really do. Do you think he uh, 
do you think he's well versed uh, enough to to handle that situation? Do you feel he has enough knowledge to avoid something like this? I, yes, I do. He's he's fifteen. He's he's very very mature for his age, and his name is Makai. I worry about him because I'm a parent, but. At the same time, I don't worry about him because I know he has enough knowledge and he's, sm and he's a smart enough kid to handle certain situations. And, I mean, I have to, as a parent, I have to let him live his life. I have to let him grow. I have to. The only thing I can do as a father is teach him how to be a man and how to handle situations the correct way. Absolutely. Do you feel that... Um that as a black man that you personally have seen any of the uh, negative side effects of systematic racism within the police force? Yeah. You have your good cops, you have your bad cops. Absolutely. Then sometimes you never know. They might just wake up. Everybody has their day. Everybody wakes up on the wrong side of the bed every couple of mornings or so. I mean, I even have them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you never know what a person's going through. You never know what, where their mind is. Exactly. And then to me, that brings up an incredible point with that incredible point being, you know, nobody can tell you how to feel. Exactly. We, all have, we all have that option on our own accord. I, I, I do sincerely ask before anybody judge, before anybody blasts with negative comments, this was not meant to become a political debate, though. And yes, I know. And I acknowledge we put that out there and it's, you know, it increases the odds of something like that happening. I would just like to ask of the uh, viewers, of the fans, of the people listening, be mindful. Some of us have never been there. And in order to understand something, you would have had to have been there. But most of all, be respectful for the family. Absolutely. And, and the, for the family and every everyone that's going through this right now. Yeah. Because they really need each other right now in this time. You know, and it, and, and, and it doesn't, to me, when I hear the term war, it doesn't always mean on a battlefield. And it's so sad that we, as a liberated, free nation, have to find ourselves in these predicaments where after events of social injustice, exactly. such as what you're seeing right now, where they battle whoever that adversary embodiment mm -hmm. is, now they're having to simultaneously battle these people that are supposed to act as their brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. their fellow countrymen. They're now having to battle them just because of a difference of opinion. <laughs> I think that that is fundamentally and morally wrong. You don't have to agree with the person next to you in order to respect their opinion and move along. Okay. At the end of the day, this country was built upon freedom, and I feel like that is becoming more and more slowly encroached in on yeah. and being taken away as we speak. And I think as far as the go with like the police force, their motto is to serve and protect. With the way these shootings are going. And for this segment, we have none other than our awesome camera operator. Though he may be an extraordinary camera operator, somewhat of a pessimistic person. <laughs> We're going to tap into this mind here. Hello? That is none other than Mr. Strangler. Well, with that being said, it's been brought to many people's attention that you don't like many things. No. What do you like? <clears throat> Man, uh... What do you say about Okay. What about James? Cheez-Its or cheese nips? What's the difference? Well, Much the same thing. Well, one of them is like, um, what is, who makes Cheez-Its? One of them is made by Nabisco, one of them is made by Nabisco imitators. So it's pretty much the same thing as one sort of thing. You've never had both? I mean, I'm sure I have, I just... Crackers, crackers, but, uh, <laughs> you know, they aren't very memorable. So crackers suck. <laughs> yeah, actually, okay. crackers suck. Put that on the list. Crackers suck. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. That part of the movie is. Jesus. What about 
Fusion Multivites complete gummies. All right, you're gonna you're gonna get one. You're gonna get one courtesy of Damascus Audio. That's all right. They're pretty stiff. Uh -huh. I'm sick. Need a boost of energy. Ooh. Sometimes you just got to raise energy. What do you think about paint? Get you up and going. Well, I've never bought anything from anything I've ever seen in advertisement, so it sucks. <laughs> You're a thief. I like this guy. Oh, oh, so you just take handouts. Does bumming suck? <laughs> no, not really. Bumming is good! <laughs> bumming is good! We found hey. something! We found something! Bumming is good. And ultimately, we have ran down classics. <laughs> American staple rock bands. And well, we found something Will likes. If you have anything you'd like to give him, give it to him. If not, I'm going to take it. <laughs> and that would suck. I really like this guy's honesty. Um, inquire within for cash. What about Cash App? Cash App sucks. <laughs> Thanks to Messenger Pay is good shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again, today. Hello? Not so loud. <laughs> Calm down, man. Will, you're getting older and experiencing some changes you might not understand. Get smaller instead of bigger. Okay. The talk sucks. We have a special treat for you today. Our very own Damascus Forge bourbon. Go ahead and have you a swig of that. Old T sucks. Old T sucks. Old T sucks. sucks. Cheers and chants. Do cheers and chants suck? <laughs> cheers and chants suck. My <laughs> god. <laughs> I hate you. Me too. Who's your favorite wrestler? Don't mess this up. Wrestling does suck though, in honesty. It sucks. It's crap. I don't have a favorite wrestler. Now for Jordan today. We'll see y'all again live Friday from the Damascus Forge Studio.